The big thing that everybody struggles with is going through this life, dealing with trickery, dealing with human deception, dealing with all kinds of shenanigans that you face in this life, whether it's through your job, whether it's through making good decisions, uh, managing your money, taking care of yourself physically, relationships, uh, just endless choices that we make day in and day out that we're, we're manipulated by that hinder our ability to be able to operate at a high level. So what I want to talk about in, in this video is operating at a high level, overcoming human deceptions and trickery by serving God. And the relation that you have by serving God, by putting God first, by following all of his mandates, the freedom that comes with following the gospel, the freedom that comes with digging into the word, with fasting, with prayer, with relationships, with serving something bigger than you, serving something that created you, that knows what's best for you by doing those things and by putting those things first, is going to allow you to overcome the issues that you're dealing with in your life. It's going to allow you to overcome and operate at a high frequency, higher than everybody else that you're around. But most importantly, having the confidence because you're dealing with the creator of the universe. And when you're dealing with the creator of the universe and you're operating at that high, frequ the high frequency, the constant renewing of your mind, that constant renewing of your body and of your soul in all aspects will make you unstoppable and a force to be reckoned with so that you can do anything and everything you put your mind to, both in this life and the life to come. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Grab a pen, take notes. A lot of people put comments in there, okay? So I'm asking you to take notes, write down all the scriptures so that you can read them yourselves later on, okay? If you want to support the channel, you can subscribe to my private community, BereanMan.Locals.com. Link is down below. And I will do more in-depth teaching that talks specifically more about these things where we're not, as, as, uh, as, um, as they say, squished by the entities that be that control this platform that I'm speaking to you on. We'll just leave it at that. But take a, take a pen, take a pad of paper, write down everything that I'm going to talk about. Go back to it and study it. And if you want to support the channel, subscribe below. And, you, and the button will be there for you to do so. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. It says, Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. Now the backstory to this, if you go into my shorts, I did a short earlier today. And I'll leave the link in the description box below that talks about a Gentile, Cornelius. He was part of the Italian regiment. And it says in verse 2 in chapter 10 of Acts, it says that he and all his family were devout and God-fearing, and he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. So the backstory to this is that this guy was doing all the right things, but he was a Gentile. But God heard him. And God sent someone. He sent an angel to basically appear before him and say your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. And he said to send men because Cornelius was a man of action, a man of power. He could uh, authorize people to go do something because he was that type of guy. He's go do it. I'm telling you to do it. And they would go and do it. So the angel told Cornelius to send for Peter in Joppa, and to send for him because God wanted him to do things the right way. The Bible always talks about watch your life and doctrine closely because you'll save both yourself and your hearers. It's just like what I talk about. I don't want to be disqualified for the prize, so I need to live up to the standards that I talk about, and it's discussed in all these writings that were written over thousands of years from all these amazing people that God used. But it's also going to save your hearers. So the backstory is, read that, listen to that short, read, those, read that scripture. Now, this is when Peter is in front of Cornelius and he's given the backstory as to what has happened and what has transpired. Uh, it's evident that God does not show favoritism to anybody and he wants all men to be saved, to come to a knowledge of the truth. I hear all these people talk about 
God only saves these people. God only saves these people with this color of skin or this tribe or this nonsense. It's all baloney. These people are not good people. These people have an agenda. They're not out for your best interest. They're out to cause division. They're out to cause trickery. They're out to cause confusion. And they don't have the best interests of God for you, for the next person, and for this whole world. So my advice to you is, when you hear that, when you hear that stuff, look at their fruit. You don't see love. You don't see compassion. You see trickery. You see an agenda. So see through it. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. So Peter is in front of Cornelius now, because Cornelius sent his men, and he brought them. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. And Cornelius was a Gentile. He wasn't a Jew. Verse 36. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who was Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are under the power of the devil. There's a lot of you watching this video that are under the power of the devil. The only way to overcome the power of the devil is to have a relationship with the creator of the universe. To have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, with prayer, with fasting, with searching, with obedience. Search for it as if you're searching for gold. Search for it as if you're searching for a trillion dollars. That's the kind of mindset that you want to have. Verse 39, Peter goes on. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. So Jesus rose from the dead after the third day. And he was shown to various people that God had chosen. Not everybody saw him. And this is talked about earlier in the book of Acts. Verse 42. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God anointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify, testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. God commanded us. God commanded me. God commanded you. To preach to the people. And however you do that, that's totally up to you. I'm using this platform to talk to people because I'm able to talk to people at scale. I'm able to spread the message at scale because people are always on their phone. They're on their computer. It's easier and it's better to spread the message this way, even though in person it's great. In a lot of ways, it could be better in person, but we're able to utilize these platforms and I'm able to utilize these platforms to preach the word and to testify that Jesus is the one that God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. Everybody testifies about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. So Peter is going on talking about how God does not show favoritism. He accepts all men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. And I'm talking to you, wherever you're at in the world, whether you're in America, Australia, Europe, South America, Africa, Japan, China, who cares? It doesn't matter. Don't fear men. Fear God over men. God surpasses men. God oversees men. Men are only in power in this realm. And when they try to supersede the laws of God and obedience of God doing the right things, you need to see past that. You need to look past that. God is the one that purifies your heart by your faith. Acts chapter 15, verse 9 says, He made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. And this again is Peter. He's talking about uh, at the council in Jerusalem, where there was some disciples, there were some issues of what they're trying to teach them and what they should abide by. And 
basically the Gentiles, they were trying to say that the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the, uh, the, the law of Moses. Long story short, Peter talks about, we believe it is through grace that our Lord Jesus Christ saved us, just as they're saved, Jews and Gentiles alike, all people, all races. God has made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. It's by God's power, not by works. When you do these things, when you put God first through faith, when you start to follow and start to get the Holy Spirit to move in your life, to do amazing things, it purifies you, it renews your mind, you're operating at a higher frequency so that you overcome the human deception and that you overcome the trickery by serving God, by doing the right things. He purifies your life. You stop swearing. You stop hanging around with morons. You make better decisions. You think about your consequences. You think about by doing this thing and the situations that you push, put yourself in, is this going to help you spiritually or is it going to hurt you spiritually? You begin to think about the consequences of your actions, not only in this life, but most importantly, in this life to come. But you think about Cornelius, a Gentile who was not a Jew. He was doing all the right things. He was devout. He was God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need. He prayed to God regularly. How often are you praying to God? Do you get up in the morning and the first thing that you do is do you sit down on your knees and do you talk to God? Or do you look at your phone and mess around? Do you watch stupid videos and nonsense? Or do you get a firm connection with the creator of the universe and a firm connection with meditation and prayer? So that you can overcome all that you're going to face, the snakes and everybody, that all you're going to face day in and day out in this world. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5-7 to seven. You live in the midst of deception. deception. There's demonic entities that are out and about right now. They're trying to steer you away from all that's going on, from all that's happening, from all that God wants you to do. You know, just like, you know, you're able to get on your phone and you're able to connect wirelessly to the internet and use all kinds of data for various different things, whether it's to work or listening to me or, um, you know, watching other videos or watching television, what have you. There's various different ways of how you can tap into the source of energy. But you don't see the source of energy that you have with God. You don't see the connection operating at that higher frequency by connecting with the creator of the universe. I'm talking to you about tapping into that, into that frequency by digging into it day after day, by seeking God through scripture, by seeking God through fasting, through pain, through reliance, not on yourself, but by on him and all of the things that he has, all the entities that he has that are working for you, that are interceding for you through Jesus through angels. It is a spiritual battle, my friends. It's not just one, two, three, super simple, like this water bottle is here in front of us. There's things going on all around us, and we need to be cognizant of these things. We need to understand the battle and the things that we're up against so that you can overcome the deception, so you can operate at this level, so you can put yourself in the driver's seat both in this life and the life to come. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5-7. to seven. This gets deep. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sins. You know, there's scientists, they, they send their telescopes out into so-called space and a lot of it's empty. But what they're finding out is that whatever's out there, we can't even see it because it's operating in a different frequency. There's things going on out there that are operating in a different frequency and you got to tap into that frequency by serving God. By serving God, you overcome these issues that you're facing. To be with God, you must walk in the light. You can't walk in the darkness. There's demonic entities 
that want to keep you in the darkness. They want to keep you around certain people that are controlled by these demonic entities, that are controlled by Satan, that are trying to take you off the path. You ever notice when you try to do the right thing, somebody comes in here and says, hey, go do this, let's go do that. And that's Satan using these people, these demonic entities, and tempting you to go off and to forget about God and to turn your back on them, away from the light. Walking in the light purifies you. Living by the truth is the way to live. You do, want, you do not want to live by a lie. Again, this is the message that we heard from him. And this is John declaring to you, to me, to everybody, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. To live by the truth is to walk in the light. To live by the lie is to walk in darkness. To be caught up in drugs. To be caught up in drinking. To have a lack of sobriety of mind. To sleep with women that are married. To commit adultery. To do things that are clearly wrong according to the Bible. When you see somebody in need and you have the ability to help them, to not help them, or to be selfish and just think about yourself, that's walking in the darkness. Now, there's people out there, obviously, that keep making the same old bad decisions and bad decisions. And, you know, not everybody is in the same situation. And you need to be able to understand and decipher, okay, should I help this person? Or is this a person that just keeps getting captured by darkness and they keep making the bad decision? And ultimately, it's going to be up to them. But when you see somebody that has a bad a bad fall, they've, they've had bad circumstances, bad luck. You want to be able to help these people. If you see somebody with their tire that's, that's flat on the side of the road and you can help them, you want to have the heart to go to be out there and walk in the light and help this person. When you see somebody out there that's clearly lost, you want to be able to have that conversation with them about God. You want to be able to have that conversation with them about operating at that higher frequency. Because you never know how they're going to take it. They may be wide open. So many people send me messages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the word with me. Thank you for talking about these things and just reading it. I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm just Joe Schmo. I'm just an uneducated, normal guy, blue collar guy, just like the disciples were, that God used. When you notice, when, when Jesus came, God did not go out there seeking people that were at all these high universities and doing all these things and all these big shots. He went out there after people with heart, people that would not overthink things and would go out there and have the strength, but yet still the knowledge, the street smart to go out there and do it. You needed tough people that were going to be forceful. That's the kind of person that you want to be. You don't want to overthink things. You want to have a childlike attitude but not be a child. It's what Jesus talked about. You want to be as shrewd as a snake, but innocent as a dove. But you must walk in the light. You can't claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness. Because that's a lie. And you don't want to be a liar. You don't want to have these selfish ambitions that all you care about is yourself. And, and you know, forget about these people. It's all about me. I'm going to, I'm going to pimp this person out. I'm going to take all they can, all I can from them. And I'm going, to use, I'm going to use them. I'm going to use this person. I'm going to use that person. That's walking in the darkness. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 to 6. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him, must walk as Jesus did. That's a tough one to swallow. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commandments. Have you counted the cost? Have you counted the cost of what it takes to be a disciple of Jesus, the Son of God? Is the world more important to you? Do you care more about your house, your bank account, the food that you're going to eat tomorrow than by obeying God? By obeying the commandments. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. Let's be frank, people. Most people are liars. 
Most people only care about themselves, their own selfish interests. They're not putting God first. They're putting their own interests first. Your habits and your lifestyle determine who you are. Your habits and your lifestyle determine who you are to God. And frankly speaking, to be a, a, a disciple of Jesus, you must live as Jesus lived. You must share your faith with people like I'm sharing my faith with you. You must be obedient. You must have the same mindset of Jesus. All these people, with, you know, with these these priests that wear these, these uh, Catholic priests, these white collars, you must be better than them. Jesus says that your righteousness must surpass those of the Pharisees, and he mocked them. He called them children of the devil if you're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. If anyone obeys this word, God's love is truly made complete in him. And this is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. These are tough things to swallow. But these are the things that's going to help you to overcome the deception and the trickery that's in this life that's trying to get you away from the prize. It's trying to get you away from being focused on God. They're trying to get you involved with degeneracy and consumerism and focusing on your career and focusing on things which, you know, this life is, is fading away. You're here for one moment and then you're gone. They're trying to get you caught up in the next election, which means nothing. In some ways it does. If we can change things, we must change it. But I think a lot of what's going on politically is just the personification of who we are as people now in the society that we live in. We live in a degenerate society that's been completely de deceived and, and completely held captive to trickery. And they've turned their backs on God. They live in the darkness. The question is, are you going to live according to light? Do you have the strength? Do you have the mindset to be able to live as Jesus lived? And to walk as Jesus lived? To share your faith with people? To help people? To focus on the mission? To save all people? Because God wants all men to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And that's a fact, Jack. And anybody that says otherwise, they're those demonic entities that we've talked about. I'm going to end it here. 1 John chapter 2. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Verses 15 to 17. It says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever. I don't know how old you are. I know how old I am and I know it's going by very quick. It's an obligation to take care of yourself in this life. It's an obligation to control your habits and make good decisions. Not only for yourself, your family, but for God. We must be responsible people. But we must not turn our backs on God. But we must know that everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the amount of money that he has, the businesses that he has, the this, the that, the travel, the this, the that, that means nothing. If you can enjoy those experiences, please, by all means, go after it. And go and do it. Operate at that high level. But do not exchange these things for a lie. Do not exchange these things for God. God must be truth. God must be the forefront. God must be number one. And the, all of these things are secondary. Because these are the things that's going to allow you to overcome human deception and the trickery that so many fall victim to day in and day out. And you see it on their face. You see it in their life. They're slumped over. They're overweight. They've got guts. They stop dreaming. They stop living. They forgot the truth. They forgot who they are. They've been held captive by Satan and these demonic entities to do his will. And all for a lie. For what? Can't be weak. I'm not weak. Are you going to be weak? I'm not going to live for a lie. Are you going to live for a lie? I'm going to do everything I can to live by the truth. And I'm going to try and teach and talk about living by the truth until the day I die because I know that's what's most important and I know that's the side of truth with God. And there's nobody that can tell me otherwise. Because God created everything that you see, everything that you don't see. 
and God has a purpose for my life and your life. And I hope you go after it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, links are down below, bereanman.locals.com. I'll catch you in the next video. I'm out.